Hello everybody, welcome to part number who knows what of my John Deere 350B project. I finally have all the parts and pieces necessary to reassemble my final drive, all the bearings and seals. I'll show you what they are. This is the upper bearing, or the upper seal rather, that goes right in there. It is John Deere part number AT58390. You need two of them. Then you just need a stack of bearings. This is a NTN4T-02475. Then a Koyo, let's see, LM581349-N. Five O, uh, let's see, LM501. 349-N Timken 25580 and Timken 3994 Now these are different manufacturers I'm, I'm, of course they cross reference to you know a bunch of different uh, suppliers but this is what came out so I just searched for the same manufacturer and same part number and lastly you need this this is the uh, final drive uh, seal. It seals right in there. So I'm just going to put this back together in the reverse order that I took it apart. Uh, so the first thing I'll need to do is put that big oil seal, half of it in here, and the other half into that pocket in there. I prepped everything by scraping all the rust and, and gunk out of there, cleaned it as best I could, a little bit of sandpaper, some carburetor cleaner, so it's nice and clean, and I did the same thing for the other half. Okay, so now we're going to be installing one of these uh, ceiling rings in here. You can see the orientation of this piece of rubber. Um, now this is a flat lapped surface here, so you want to be very careful with it. Uh, don't really con don't scratch it, contaminate it, or anything. Yeah, I just touch it with my hands, but you know I'll, I'll wipe it off later before I seat the two metal rings together. Anyway, these pieces are pretty much clean right out of the package. I've cleaned this, and I hope that none, none of my uh, viewers tell me that I'm wrong here. But I'm going to put a little bit of gasket shellac just on the housing here. Because it's it's not perfectly clean, it's not a perfectly new surface anymore. So I really don't see how a little bit of this uh, Indian head will harm anything. So the rubber's in. Here's the metal one. Of course, there's a little bit of a squish. Got to get it in there. I'm thinking I should have uh, installed the metal ring on the rubber first and then installed the whole works in there, but we got it. Okay, so this time I'm going to put the metal ring into the rubber seal first. Let's see if that makes it any easier for me. just slides right in. Make sure that's all nicely worked in there. Okay, so this is the area where the steering clutch itself sits. I'm going to put the oil seals into this bore here. Again, I've cleaned it all up. Uh, sandpaper, scraper, everything, get it nice and clean. And it takes these oil seals. It takes two of them. Apparently, uh, there's two styles of seal. 
I don't know if the final drive is any different, but the early style, there's one big seal, and the, the later style, I don't know what serial number this changed, but it came with these two seals. So the seals, pretty much every oil seal like this, that green stuff on there, some of the seals are red, there's a red covering or whatever. Uh, that's, uh, as I understand it, some sort of a, a sealant, but this bore here isn't perfect. There are some scratches where someone obviously drove a screwdriver or something in there to, hey, actually, maybe that was from me. I, I can't remember. Anyway, they're trying to get the seals out. So once again, let's give this some extra help sealing. With the Indian head. And I'll let that cure for a minute. So of course you're going to need a, a driver, a proper size driver to drive these seals in. Uh, I found this piece of, I think it's a piece of two and a quarter inch iron pipe. It fits just right. Uh, it's just a hair smaller, maybe uh, I don't know, 100, 200,000 smaller diameter than the seal. Of course, uh, sockets and everything, that works too. I'm probably preaching to the choir. Most of you guys, I'm sure, have already done this. It's not your first rodeo. The other thing, make sure that the oil fuel is, is uh, facing the right direction. The spring of uh, in the seal always faces in towards the oil that it is sealing. Also, I gave you the John Deere part number for these seals, but you can also buy these uh, their part number CR17381. So we'll get this situated in there. After a couple whacks, make sure everything's going in evenly and not going cockeyed because you can't really fix it if you go too far like that. Now this ought to seat right up against the shoulder of the bearing that's in there. That should be it. You can feel it, the hit feels a little different. And once I hit that point, I, I angle my tool and kind of hit here and all the way around to make sure the seal isn't cocked one way or the other. Make sure all the faces, or all, all the whole edge is right up against where it ought to be. I'm just checking the flushness. I'm going to slide the bearing on. It goes onto this surface here. And as I remember, the old bearing just slid right off. The new one's a little tight. So I've got it on my bearing heater there, which I will heat up in a second. Slide that bearing down. This spacer goes on next. I'll oil up the bearing, slide it in. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. I uh, didn't check to see if this will slide on or if it has to be pressed on or you know heated on, but now that I oiled it, uh, it's too late, whatever. I'll just, uh, I'll just use the nut to sock it in if I need to. I uh, lift the shaft up a little bit. So I needed a little extra help because I was just chasing the uh, hub around and I couldn't quite hold it with my hand, so I put the chain wrench on there and now I can crank the nut with my big wrench over here. So what the manual says to do is to tighten that nut until you get two to five thousandths of end play and then advance the nut until it lines up with a hole and then turn the nut with a wrench a little bit more until it lines up with the next slot in the nut and then install the cotter pin. Well, I don't even I don't know how the hell you're supposed to measure end play even in a decent shop, let alone, you know, a shade tree mechanic like myself. But, you know, I tightened this real tight 
and I backed it off and when I backed it off everything was still kind of stiff and I sort of assume that's because of the oil seal, the resistance from that oil seal. Um, I tried backing it off and giving it a, a whack or two with a punch to unseat whatever might have been seated a little bit, bit too tight and it still has the same resistance. It's not too tight, it's just it's just firm. See, I can rotate it by hand, but it just doesn't really, you know, spin freely. But I guess that's okay. So if anybody has any other uh, feedback, let me know. But what I did, like I said, I tightened it, loosened, backed it off till it was loose, tightened it by hand, and then tightened it just a hair, however much was necessary to line up this cotter pin hole. So now it's time to put the upper drive shaft into the final drive housing. I have it laid out here with the bearings. There's uh, the two side bearings here, the gear that's going to go on that spline there, and the uh, I think this is called the quill, which goes right there. Now, both of these bearings are press fits. They're slid down as far as they can go, but this bearing has to go down to this shoulder, and this one down to this shoulder. Another thing I decided to do before I put it back together is clean up this uh, seal diameter here. It was a little pitted. I cleaned it. I, well, I wire brushed it as best I could. Cleaned it with carburetor cleaner. Then I cleaned it with acetone several times. And I heated it with a propane torch to drive out any oil and moisture. And then I mixed up some JB weld. And with this still just a little bit warm, I smeared the JB weld in there. Let it cure. And then I filed and sanded all the excess down so it's just in the low spots. Okay, so we're ready to go. I've kind of done a dry run a couple times just to make sure everything is in the right place. And make sure you install the bearing in the correct direction. Make sure it goes into the cup. be it. Now this gear, uh, it, it's symmetrical. It can go on both ways, but I like to put stuff together the same way it came apart, especially old stuff like this. So I used these witness marks on the ID there, or not on the ID, but on the face rather, and kind of matched it up with the bearings. And I determined that this side faces this way, just so the the face of the teeth, they're, they're, I mean, they're not worn, but they've been meshed a certain way for quite some time. So I just kind of made it up like that, and that looks correct, so, so that's how it's going to be. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty beefy snap ring. I'm going to have to get my pliers for this. Almost got it. There we go. Now since we're all ready to go, I'm going to take my Indian head and put a little film on the ceiling surface and also on the shims and the bearing quill. I'll slide this onto the stud. There we go. Put the bolts in there. business, all you gotta do is tighten her up.